Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we've got another episode of This Is Not A Top 10. And we had a marathon episode yesterday about the oak moss. And I assure you, I have not lost my collective mind. Uh, this all has to do with my schedule for work. There's some things that are going on that, at the moment, give me a little bit more free time than I usually have. Can't go into more detail than that, unfortunately. Uh, but it's not a bad thing. So um, do not worry about little old me. And uh, this video is going to be a This Is Not A Top 10 Ambergris. Now, before we get into the fragrances in my collection that have the note of ambergris, a couple things to note. Number one, I don't want you to feel that you have to have a fat wallet or a you know big bank account or be independently wealthy or whatever name you want to call it, have a lot of disposable income you know, to participate in something like this. So in this list, Yes, you're going to see lots of niche fragrances. Niche fragrances are usually the ones that use the, you know, real ambergris or indie fragrances or whatever it is. But there are 20 and 30 and $35 fragrances on here. And perfumery is all about creating accords, right? And, you know, even the most trained nose when it comes to a material like ambergris, which adds this um, ethereal, you know, freshness, almost this sparkle, you know, this champagne, this pop, this pizzazz to a fragrance. It it, it kind of highlights notes. It takes a flashlight and highlights a note. And, you know, it it's a fixative. It sticks to your skin. Ambergris has a molecule in it called ambrine, which is basically why you can stick a piece of ambergris on the table and in two, three, five, ten years, you can come back to it and it smells exactly the same because it basically locks the fragrance smell in. Some very smart Frenchmen many years ago discovered that. And that's the reason they started putting it in perfumes is it literally locks the scent in. And so real ambergris nowadays is very rare. Most houses don't use real ambergris. Most houses use an accord. Even some of the niche houses I'm going to talk about now Many of them don't use real ambergris. It's just prohibitively expensive, okay? So, again, don't feel like you have to go mortgage your house or take a reverse mortgage or, you know, sell off a kidney to buy some of these. There are many fragrances in this list that have an ambergris accord, if you will, uh, that is used, created by ambroxan and other salty facets that will give you a very realistic ambergris note. So take that with a grain of salt. You know, this is a community where we can all kind of come together, um, whether you're uh, a billionaire or whether you're a college kid that just loves perfume, you know, this community is for everyone. So that's my little rant about ambergris since it is a very expensive material. Um, so let's get into this. The first one we're going to talk about is from the house of Maitrei Par Parfumé Agantier, and it's called Ombre Presso. And Ombre Perso um, is a fragrance I'm very glad I got to experience. I'm very glad I got to understand this fragrance. Um, this is basically an oriental spicy style fragrance that has lavender and uh, vanilla, labdanum, all of the accords that, you know, create a oriental fragrance, if you will. And... Then it has a beautiful ambergris in the in the in the dry down in the base. And I'll tell you what, if I didn't already own many other ambers, like if I didn't already own share um sorry, Ombre Sultan, if I didn't already own Leo du Desert Marocain, which is coming up later, if I didn't own La Tizan Parfume, Lo de Ombre Extreme, if I didn't own those, Ombre Perso would be full bottle worthy. It is absolutely stunning. I would love to discover more from the house. This is the only thing I've smelled. Rich Mitch is going to send me a vetiver perfume from this house that he did not get on with. Uh, and so thank you, Rich. That's very kind of you. Um, so yes, I'm excited to try more from this house, but this is the first one. You know, we, li we like to start with the decants. These are going to be mixed in, though. This is no, no particular order. Um... The second one is from the House of Amouage, and it's from their library collection. And this is called Opus 9. And Opus 9 is a creation by two perfumers. One is Pierre Negrin, which is famous from the House of Amouage. He's done a lot of their perfumes. He's done Opus uh, 11. 
He's done the Blue Beast interlude. He did uh, Portrayal Man. He's done a lot of different stuff. Oh, this is so good. This is full bottle worthy for me for sure. This is one where, I mean, just smelling it, it just gets my, it, my mouth is almost watering. Even though it has nothing to do with the Gourmands, a floral animalic fragrance. It's so well done. Uh, and Nathalie Lorson is the other perfumer, two of my all-time favorites. Um, oh, this is so good. It's so powerful, too. It's an animalic floral that uses the note of beeswax and leather. And the whole idea around this fragrance was to create an accord uh, that is inspired by La Traviata. And um, Opus 9 is basically a soulful interpretation of the camellia flower. So the camellia flower has no smell. So what's interesting about it. What would a camellia flower smell like if it had a smell? That's Opus 9. And I've got two other of these decants that are full. But long story short, and I love these decants Amouage does with the cap. This is a proper niche decant. Don't let me get off on a rant on decants. Um, but if you've never smelled Opus 9 and you like animalic fragrances, floral fragrances, the jasmine in here is stunning. And it has that Nathalie Larson black pepper, you know, thing. And of course, ambergris and civet in the, in the base. It's absolutely stunning. Full bottle worthy? Yes, absolutely. I'd love a bottle of that. It's just so expensive. Okay, next we're going to do a long, uh, um, a very old fragrance. It's actually coming up on its 100 year anniversary in a couple years. Uh, this is called Kenitze 10. Uh, and... Kenitze 10 was actually perfumed by Francois Coty, not the house Coty, by the perfumer Coty, uh, and Vincent Robert. And this is one of the best leather fragrances of all time, hands down. Uh, has a beautiful iris. You know, I always get this purple vibe when I when I when I smell this. I need to wear it again soon. It's been a while. It has a base of castorium. There's a little bit of dirtiness. Usually the old leather fragrances use that castorium note to build the leather accord uh, with moss and, of course, ambergris. And um, I'll tell you what. I mean, if you just want a... Uh, if, if you just want a, um, you know, leather fragrance that is... Something where you can just go to Lucky Scent and buy it and get a fantastic leather fragrance and not worry about vintages. Kenitze 10 is the way that I would I would point you to. Okay, next we're going to go to a... Um, now, that came out in 1925. In the year 2000, to celebrate the new century, the House of Kenitze put out this fragrance. And this is called Kenitze 10 Golden Edition. You can see this decant that I have here. I would love a full bottle of this, too. This is so good. Leathery, spicy. It almost feels like the spices are turned up somehow. Um, the animalics are maybe turned down just a little bit. It's a little bit more wearable to my nose. Like they've made it, they've made Kenitze 10 for the modern man in, in 2000, but it keeps that leathery, spicy soul that I love. Uh, I would love uh, a full bottle of this. Absolutely love it. Um, and Kenitze 10 is one, Kenitze 10 Gold Edition is definitely one to put on the radar. All right, give me one second. Um, I have to respond. Uno momento. Okay, uh, next on the list we have a, um, Lesson Demo Dablas. And we've got two actually from the house. By the way, when we get to the fragrances that are heavy ambergris fragrances, the ones that you should kind of put an asterisk by, if you really want to experience the best ambergris fragrances I've ever smelled, I will tell you which ones those are. Uh, this is Lesson Demo Dabla's Musks de Sables. And Musk de Sables smells like it does have real ambergris. There's another one from this house coming up that I think is even better. Uh, if you will, for a pure ambergris smell. This is still amazing. If you love musk and ambergris and orris absolute and uh, patchouli, uh, benzoin, there's this beautiful bitter almond note here. It's an amazing musk. I mean, if you came to me and said, 
Ramsey, what niche musk should I buy right now? I mean, this is probably what I would tell you to, to sniff. Give it a chance. There's a little bit, it's a little bit animalic, but it's not as much as musk kublai Khan, which is coming up later on the list. So this next one is the one you should put an asterisk by. If you want to smell one of the best ambergris fragrances I've ever smelled, uh, this is from the house of Les Endemodables. It's called Ombre Supreme. Now, Ombre Supreme is basically uh, a, an ambergris fragrance. I mean, ambergris is the star of the show. It's an out-and-out out ambergris fragrance. It's floral, though. There are some floral facets to it. There are some spicy facets. There's some... In the opening, you almost get this sweaty clary sage, okay? So, you ever been like... Um, I don't know. You ever been like swimming in a... Uh, in the ocean or in a in a lake that's maybe a little bit dirty uh, and you get out and you don't have access to a shower right away but you're hanging out with people and you don't want to leave and you just kind of let yourself like dry um, after getting out of the ocean the salty ocean salty ocean probably works better as a as a reference for this story and let's say you don't take a shower right away you're drinking beer in the sun or whatever you're doing hanging out with your friends right and it just, that salty seawater just kind of dries on, on your body and it starts mixing with your sweat, okay? Imagine that, um, that mental image. That is what the clary sage and aldehydic opening smells like. And there is some pepper, there's some cardamom, uh, but this is all about a couple things for me. Ambergris and uh, jasmine. But the jasmine is done in such a way where it's not like you smell it and go, oh my God, that is jasmine grandiflorum. It's, it, no, it's not that. It's uh, Antoine Lee, the perfumer, somehow created something where you can appreciate the beauty of the ambergris, the sparkle, but you still get these little floral touches, almost like flowers floating, you know, up and down on the waves, like some dumped flowers off of a boat or something, and they're just kind of floating aimlessly in the ocean the sun is shining you get that sparkly sun reflection off the ocean that's probably the best way to describe ambergris when it's a beautiful bright day out and the sun is just sparkling off the water you get that sparkle that's what ambergris feels like in a composition almost ozonic a little bit animalic because obviously it comes from a sperm whale uh, but um a uh, very special ingredient, and Ombre Supreme is one of the best. Okay, uh, now this is a fragrance that really stole my heart. Not because of the ambergris in it, but because of the way it wore. It reminded me of a vintage Guerlain, honestly. Uh, I would, I wish I had like five or ten grand set aside where I could just buy everything I want from this house. Uh, but it's just too cost prohibitive right now. This is thanks to my perfume godfather slash mother. Uh, this is uh, Tiger Lust by the house of Ensar Oud, Sultan Pasha's house. My God. Um, there's three types of Oud in here. Indian, Indonesian Oud, Sri Lankan Oud, and Chinese Oud. There's Castorium and Civet. It's animalic, which you know I love. It's very smoky, but it also has these um, floral touches. There's tobacco, frangipani, coffee blossom, and uh, it's peppery, there's osmanthus and sandalwood, and of course, ambergris in the dry down. This thing lasted on my skin. I, this is nuclear. This is um, thermonuclear. I don't know what you would say. It is absolutely a beast, and uh, I, I love this stuff. I, I mean, quite frankly, if I could wear a fragrance of that quality every day, I'd be very happy. By the way, uh, I didn't even do scent of the day. Um, Let's do scent of the day. It is Dior Essence. Uh, I don't know if you guys know Dior Essence, but I talked a little bit about it many times on my channel. I actually did an Instagram post today on it as my scent of the day. Uh, this is a Guy Robert, and it's a Schieffer fragrance that has some floral touches, but there's this resinous base to it. There's Styrax and Benzoin, and uh, it's almost like a Schieffer meets an Oriental. So if you like fragrances like um, Schieffer Palaton, definitely one to check out, um, Dior Essence. Okay, next, uh, we're going to do the House of Andy Tower, all right? 
and the House of Andy Tower will work will work backwards. We'll start with his newest release, which is Sundowner. Early impression of this coming very soon on my channel. Uh, Sundowner was sent to me by one of you, Perfume God pe Persons, people, you know who you are. Thank you very much. And um, Sundowner is a spicy, little bit of sweetness, if you will, uh, with some tobacco, cacao, uh, tobacco absolute, and rose absolute, cinnamon absolute, uh, sorry, cinnamon, orange zest, and cypriol, vanilla, tonka, sandalwood, and ambergris. And Andy Tower has this house DNA, if you will. He has this house ambergris. If you twisted my arm, I would say it is, um, it's not real, ambergris, okay? I would say it's probably a creation of his that he developed, but it smells amazing. Uh, and, and I'll talk about the other fragrances in my collection that use that same DNA from him because he uses it across many fragrances. The Tower Odd is what people call it. You know, kind of like Guerlain has the Guerlain Odd. Andy Tower has the Tower Odd. And uh, the Tower Odd has this ambergris DNA built into it. I don't think it's real. It could be. Maybe he uses a touch of real ambergris. I think it's probably like an ambroxan, salty ambroxan vibe that he created that's unique, but it is fantastic. It's amazing, and it's here with the tobacco cacao. I like this fragrance. It's just a little sweet for me, but I'll talk about it when I do the uh, full review. Okay, or early impression. So let's go to his other creations. First is um, Léa du Désert Marocaine. This is the one that he's famous for. This came out in 2005. Uh, it is an amber. It's cumin, coriander, petigran, jasmine, cystus, labdanum, beautiful labdanum in here. Ambergris, that house DNA, vetiver, and cedarwood. And um, this fragrance is um, the, the uh, name itself, I believe, translates to the air above the desert. Um, or the air of the desert. And um, one of the channels that I watch and love, Thomas from Early Greek, he said that the ambergris in this somehow, you know, has an ability to freeze the perfume in time. Like, it's going along, you start to get this progression of the fragrance, and then hour one or two, once that ambergris, you know, comes in, it just locks the fragrance in and, like, freezes it in time. Uh, and I know exactly what he's talking about. Um, it really feels like this fragrance does have a progression for the first couple hours, and then all of a sudden, bam, that ambergris just kind of locks everything in. Uh, there's, but it's still, you can almost, it's almost like you can see it moving behind the glass. You know, the ambergris glassed everything in. You can see the fragrance changing, but it's glassed in. Um, uh, amazing creation. I mean, one of the best uh, creations of, of the deck of the century, if you will, since the turn of the century. He then followed it up in um, 2016 with a flanker called Accor du Desert, and this is an X-ray version. So Le du Desert Marocain is not an X-ray. It's an eau de toilette intense is what he calls it. Accor du Desert is an X-ray, and it keeps that ambergris base, but it almost makes everything... Um, it makes everything amped up more. Uh, it's 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 thicker. It's richer. I don't necessarily know if it's better. I mean, you they're probably redundant to own both. I love both so much that um, you know owning one or the other I wouldn't care. And since they're only fifty mil bottles, whatever, I'll I'll own them both. But. Um, you know, uh, this is the X-ray version. It's a little bit more expensive. His prices are going up soon. Uh, that news came down a couple months back. But, um, you know, I, I love them both. I don't know which one I would pick if you made me pick one. Uh, that's going to be a tough one. But there is that definite ambergris house DNA from Andy Tower. And then my oldest tower bottle... I got this from Mudasir. Shout out to you, Mudasir. On base notes, look up Mudasir. He is a, uh, I would trust him, any person, anytime. 
you know, he's been doing it for 30 years, all 25 years, whatever it is. The guy is just a legend in the bass notes community. Um, and I bought this bottle off of him. This is Incense Extreme. This is what Andy Towers' original stock bottles used to look like uh, before they switched to the ones I just showed you. And Incense Extreme is uh, one of my favorite incenses, if not my favorite incense. It has this um, amazing mixture of that house DNA I was telling you about, that tower rod with the ambergris, but he's mixed it with iris and frankincense and some masculine notes at the top. So it has coriander and petit gras. Uh, and there's some woods down in the base, whatever woods he's using here, cedar, sandalwood, kayak wood, I have no clue what the woods are. But it does an amazing job of giving you longevity and projection and all the stuff frag heads love, you know, but you can still focus on the beautiful ambergris note. It's not like, you know, Bois d'Ensemble from Armani is probably the most realistic ambergris, but it lasts like an hour or two on my skin. This lasts eight, nine hours. I mean, it's it's a long fragrance for, for a frankincense. And usually incense fragrances have this problem. The longer you make them, the less realistic they become. Uh, and so this walks that line beautifully of giving you longevity, but still staying true to the name Incense Extreme. Now, I've never smelled the ones that come in the bottle that looks like this, though. This is the only one I have and have ever smelled. Um, so I don't know if there was reformulations or whatever it is, but uh, if, if it's the same, that is a stunning incense fragrance. Okay, next. We're going to do an Arige Lodore, Russian Atom. And again, this is one to put an asterisk by. If you want to smell an amazing ambergris, check this one out. This is called Atlantic Ambergris. Now, this is part two. Um, I've never smelled part one, but honestly, his fragrances are so... Uh, his fragrances are so... Um, hard to find sometimes and rare once they actually get released and sold out that anything you can find, the first one, the second one, if you're into this, grab it. Uh, this is, this is, uh, this uses the note of Irish white ambergris, and there's this gigantic nutmeg note. So look how um, dark the juice looks. The nutmeg is huge. It reminds me of when I used to put nutmeg in like eggnog as a kid, you know, over the holidays, and you put too much and you take a sip and that nutmeg just hits you right in the back of your throat. The nutmeg accord is huge at first on this, but it dries down, it becomes more floral, uh, it becomes resinous, it has that Arige Lodore DNA. One of the best ambergris fragrances I've ever smelled. Um, I already mentioned two main ones, Lesson Demo Dabla's Ombre Supreme and Atlantic Ambergris 2, which is going to be hard to find, but you know, if you're a lover of ambergris, you can check it out. And then... Uh, Sultan Pasha in 2022, this year, and I think it's still available on the website, uh, worked with Russian Adam to create this, Civet de Nuit. And Civet de Nuit, I did an early impression on both of these, actually. I did an early impression on Atl Atlantic Ambergris and Civet de Nuit. And so go check those out on my channel if you want more info. But this is an animalic floral uh, the heliotrope in it will remind you of Guerlain's Gone By. I said that of other Sultan Pasha fragrances, uh, but it really does. It reminded me of uh, Le Bleu a little bit. And um, this has this white ambergris note in the base. That's absolutely stunning. Uh, but it is a floral fragrance. Even though it says civet, they're using a vintage civet from 50 or 60 years ago, which doesn't smell as animalic as the you know, modern or synthetic civet you're, you're used to smelling. Okay, let's go to the House of Creed. So the House of Creed is another niche house that claims ambergris, you know, in a lot of their compositions. The first is Orange Spice. Now, this is discontinued. Um, and it, uh, they claim it came out in 1950, but it smells like it came out in 1981, 82, 83, 84, something like that. It has this mandarin and orange, of course, orange spice, with clove and ambergris in the dry down. It smells like a pure Bourdon, but I don't think this one actually is a pure Bourdon, but it smells like if Creed did Koros. And then we're going to go to 1970. Well, what they claim was 1970. That's probably maybe true. By then, 
you know, Olivier Creed was up and running and, and creating things and claiming they were from hundreds of years ago. But this one he claimed was from 1970. Citrusy Fresh Fragrance. There's no name on it. It's a decant. Uh, but this is Selection Vert. Selection Vert is a fragrance that if you're a lover of fresh fragrances, like if you if you love fragrances like Geranium Pour Monsieur, if that's a holy grail for you, you have to smell Selection Vert. It's basically this Neroli Citrus Fragrance with touches of peppermint. That's why I said Geranium Pour Monsieur has that mint peppermint thing going on. This has that with peppery, there's some peppery aspects to it. So there's peppery notes and peppermint with herbs and ambergris. And the ambergris in the base, they claim that's all that's in the base is ambergris, which is probably complete BS, but who knows. Um, and the, this is an older, I think this is also discontinued. This is an older creed. Sometimes the older creeds, maybe they actually did use real ambergris, who knows. Um, Next, we're going to go to uh, one of my favorite creeds, and I have three bottles of this stuff. Um, four, I have four bottles of this stuff. I absolutely love this stuff. Uh, one of them fell in my lap because, um, you know, uh, my, my good friend um, Anuj sent me a bottle. Uh, it, was, it had an issue with the sprayer, but it was a partial. And then I had, and then this is a backup, and then I have a flacon of this as well, but it's called Venezia. I think this is the most underrated creed. Um, if you like fragrances that have that oriental DNA, um, if anyone wants to laugh at creed, more than 200 years of experience. Um, if you like fragrances like Shalimar, okay, and you want to smell Shalimar done with the highest quality ingredients you can imagine, check out Venezia. First of all, look at the color of that juice. Is that not sexy? I mean, if you're a frag head, tell me that's not sexy. Look at that. I love juice color like that. Um, oh, it just has this simplicity to it. And I had a couple people who watched my, you know, I hyped this up a little bit because I love it. I just hype up what I love and that's that. Uh, I have no, no, you know, it's not like Creed is going to get anything. Someone, some, I don't even want to get into it, but someone was like, oh, you're hyping that up because you got that bottle for free. I'm like, first of all, what brand would want you to hype up something that's discontinued that they don't get credit for bu you buying anymore? You can't go buy it from the brand, dummy. They're not going to send that out for review, number one. Number two, they're definitely not going to send it to me because I'm not a shill. Um, and so I'm not just going to say good things about it. Anyways, that's a whole nother story, but... Venezia is a, some people bought it based on some videos I did in the past and came back and said, Ramsey, this smells like it has real ambergris. It smells like it has real Mysore sandalwood in it. And I said, I completely agree. Who knows if it actually does, but it smells that way. And there's really only five notes. There's bergamot in the top, Bulgarian rose in the heart, ambergris, sandalwood, and vanilla in the base. And these old bottles, um, absolutely stunning. Love, love that stuff. Could easily be the best Creed. Okay, now one that I ran through an entire bottle of. This is empty. It's Neroli Sauvage. Neroli Sauvage is another one like Selection Vert where they claim ambergris is the only base note, which is probably just complete BS, but who knows. Um, and this is Neroli, Orange Blossom, um, Vervain, Bitter Orange, Bergamot, Grapefruit, Lemon, yeah, I mean, it reminds me of uh, Eau de Rochus, which came out a year before this, actually. Which doesn't surprise me that Creed copied a popular fragrance. But um, after smelling Eau de Rochus, I would never encourage anyone to buy Neroli Sauvage. Just go buy Eau de Rochus. That's a fantastic fragrance. And then Royal Water. This is my empty bottle. I have another bottle. Uh, that I'm working off of right now. I'm on my second bottle, but I'll show you guys the empty one here. Um, Royal Water came out in 1997, I believe. Uh, this is bergamot, clementine, vervain, peppermint, basil, cumin, pepper, juniper, juniper, one of the best juniper fragrances you can find with ambergris, and they claim Tonkin musk. Tonkin musk is like a holy grail musk. 
they're not using Tonkin Musk. I, I wouldn't think. Um, but who knows? You know, if they say they are, we'll take them at their word. I mean, they've been so honest with us before. Next, we're going to do Green Irish Tweed. Green Irish Tweed. And uh, Green Irish Tweed, there's the box. For those of you that want to see a Creed box, um, it is um, probably their, the fragrance that put them on the map. Pierre Bourdon did this in 85, uh, and then, of course, he followed that up with Cool Water in 88. That lemon verbena, iris, violet, you know, ambergris, sandalwood, cedarwood thing. It's just very uh, fresh and welcoming and pleasant and professional and all, all of the stuff that you could say about Green Irish Tweed. Um, I, it's spring, spring in a bottle for me. It's, it's amazing. And then, of course, how could we do a Creed list without the great Aventus? Yes, there, there was ambergris in the early batches of Aventus. Whether it was real or not, who knows, but... I, you know, this is a 2014 bottle. I've shown this off before. I've got just a tiny drop, and then I got to move to my 2015 bottle. But um, th these older batches did smell like the base was much heavier. Aventus became lighter and lighter and lighter and weaker and weaker and weaker over the years. Um, they, it seems like they've constantly reformulated it. The the ingredients don't stand out like they used to. You know, uh, the quality of this stuff used to be out outstanding, and I feel like they've butchered it as they've gotten more and more greedy, and I won't buy new Creed bottles anymore. They lost my trust. And that's, you know, when, it, when, when that happens for a brand, there's almost no way to get it back. Uh, and so I think BlackRock overpaid for the brand because they're going off of previous sales, but those sales aren't going to continue in the future. I think Olivier Creed got out at the perfect time. He timed it again perfectly. And the fact that he's sitting in some castle in France somewhere as a billionaire, quite frankly, kind of pisses me off. Um, but there you have it. I mean, that's BlackRock's fault for pay paying a billion dollars for them. Okay, next, we're going to go to Himalaya. And Himalaya by the House of Creed. Uh, and this is the only new style bottle. I bought one. And I said, never again. That's it. Um, never buying these new 100 mil bottles. Clearly, this has been reformulated from my old 4-ounce bottle. Uh, this is a 2017 batch. So, uh, Himalaya is an example of a beautiful sandalwood fragrance that supposedly has a gunpowder note with um, nutmeg and pepper and grapefruit and orange and bergamot and lemon and fresh stuff. And then the base is uh, musk, lots of white musk with, uh, I mean, look at the bottle, look at that gray. I mean, imagine like a gray musky gunpowder vibe with ambergris in the base. That's what the Creed website says. Now, if you also want to laugh, the, the Creed website also says that they use a 2000 year old um, distilling technique uh, it's I, It was on the website earlier this year when I checked. I don't know if it's still there, but me and Rich Mitch and, a ch one, you know, during one of the chats uh, we had on Eugene's stream, I think just had a, a laugh about it. Um, anyways, yeah, it's just some of the stuff Creed claims is like. So, all right, next, ACA Aluminum. Uh, this is a discontinued, all these gray caps are discontinued, and ACA Aluminum is one of the good ones. Uh, it basically translates to like uh, knight's chain mail, if you will. And there's nothing metallic or banana about this. Some people say there's a banana note in here. I think it's just the mixture of the bergamot, vanilla, ambergris. Gives off that metallic banana vibe. There are some fruits in here. I don't think there's banana per se. Although I could see why someone would say there's a banana note. Um... But there is some sort of fruit cocktail melange going on and some spices. It smells, I don't want to say potpourri, but my wife thinks it has potpourri qualities to it. Uh, although I don't get that. Um, and I, if you love resinous oriental spicy fragrances, like 
This is almost like a precursor to Venezia. Venezia came out in 87. This came out in 73 or so they say. Um, but this is a, uh, these old EDTs were the best bang, the best bang for your buck creeds ever used to be. They used to be cheaper than the current eau de parfums. Um, and of course they discontinued them all. Anyways, next we're going to go to, uh, Zesty Man, Zesty Mandarin Pamplemousse. Zesty Mandarin Pamplemousse came out in 75. And this fragrance is also a simple fragrance. Bergamot, grapefruit, mandarin, orange, white blossoms, and ambergris in the base. Um, if you like honeysuckle, if you like the note of honeysuckle, all right, um, I would urge you to check this fragrance out if you can find it at a good price. This isn't hyped very much because it's a citrus fragrance. If you want a fresh citrusy classic citrus fragrance you know this came out in 75 remember men's citruses were you know think about what men were wearing at the time they were wearing oh sauvage they were wearing ho hang by balenciaga that citrusy cologne you know um ho hang has more going on with it but you get the idea uh that freshness that was ha happening in men's perfume you get that here but this is completely unisex to me because the honeysuckle accord, and it's a clear honeysuckle accord to my nose, uh, one of the best honeysuckle accords I've ever smelled. If you like Hummingbird uh, by Zoologist, I would implore you to check out Zesty Mandarin Pamplemousse. Okay, next, a couple more creeds and then we'll move on to another niche house. Next is going to be Original Vetiver. Um, one of my favorite fresh vetivers, if you will. Um, this is a summer and spring eat dumb reach for me. I mean, if you want to smell professional and it has this, of course, Creed sandalwood musk thing going on that they do so well, uh, in the base and it's a little bit peppery and they claim that they use vetiver leaf in the top. Now, no one uses the vetiver leaf in a, uh, fragrance composition. What, what, what they use whenever they use uh, vetiver. Anytime you see vetiver, it's the root. It's the root of the vetiver grass that they use. And um, vetiver cannot be recreated in a lab. All vetiver that you smell in perfume, whether it's a $500 Roja or a $20 Ancre Noir, all vetiver is real vetiver. You know, it's, it's, it, it's not recreated in a lab. There's no vetiver molecule, right? Uh, and Creed's claiming that they use the vetiver leaf. Um, I mean, maybe it's just marketing. Maybe, you know, because on the Creed website, it's like, we use all parts of the vetiver. Um, we use, um, you know, uh, we use this, 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 and this, and all parts of the vetiver. So anyways, it's probably just marketing, but uh, there is ambergris in the base there. And then there's also bois. Du Portugal, which is probably one of my favorite creeds. Uh, the older bottles of this, I had an old 75 mil bottle that just blew my mind. I mean, it was probably from the, I think it was like a 2008 batch or something, but my God, it was nuclear. It was amazing. Uh, the lavender, the uh, sandalwood combo was just stunning. There's also some pimento, nutmeg, clove, Vetiver, there's some vetiver in the base, and ambergris and patchouli. Um, this is a 2018 batch. Uh, I probably wouldn't go past 2018. If you can go 2018 or 2017 or earlier is probably what I would recommend. Don't ask why I have this, but I do. Uh, I do love this fragrance. And what I do is I just decant it into this, you know, into one of these. They seal up real tight. Um, the, the lemons, the citrusy opening, uh, the lavender is just beautiful. It is a beautiful fragrance. I mean, Bois de Portugal is just stunning. And then we're going to go to um, a designer. So next is a Davidoff from 84. This is Davidoff, Davidoff, the first men's fragrance. This is all I have, this little 25 ml bottle. I wish I had a big bottle of this stuff. It's spicy, it's green, it's leathery. There's tons of castorium in here and ambergris. Oh, 
vintage carnation. Um, there's a little, there's a, a iris note. I love leather and iris. That combo is complete winning combo for me. Uh, and, and that's extremely hard to find nowadays. Glad to have even what I have. Next, from the house of Aaron Terrence Hughes, 2019 release. This is Tabak. And uh, Tabak is one that I've worn to bed a couple times. I've never given it a full wear. I'm waiting until it gets a little bit cooler. Um, this fragrance has the ability of remaining very dry, and there's not very much sweetness in it. Even though there's vanilla, he's used bourbon vanilla, uh, and it's a little more complex. It's a little sweeter, uh, or a little less sweet, I should say. And he's used damask rose, ambergris, cedar, and Burmese oud. Now, I don't get much oud in here. They really did focus on the tobacco. I've worn this to bed twice now. And the first time, I was a little lukewarm on it. I liked it, but I didn't love it. The second time, I liked it a little bit more. Uh, maybe time number three will be the home run. I don't know. It's, it's slowly growing on me. It's not as bad as I expected. Let's put it that way. Uh, okay, let's go to the house of Roja. He's the other big niche house that loves using ambergris. He claims, he's done an interview that's out on YouTube that said, we looked around the industry and we realized we were the only niche house left using, you know, using ambergris in our creations. Who knows if that's true or not. But the first one is Majestic Oud Parfum. I just did an entire video on this. I did an entire review on Majestic Oud Parfum. Uh, if you're looking for an Oud, go to... Russian Adam, Sultan Pasha, Bortnikov. This is not a nude. Uh, not to my nose, anyways. I can totally see why they discontinued this. Um, watch the review if you're interested. Lots of florals. Um, and of course, in the base, there's ambergris and civet and castorium and labdanum and all that good stuff. Cypriol, stuff like that. But Majestic Oud Parfum is the first one. And then we're going to do another quick little decant here. Uh, this is called H, the exclusive Parfum Pour Homme, which is discontinued, just like Majestic Oud. So these first two are discontinued. Uh, H, the exclusive Parfum Pour Homme Parfum is the full name. Um, this is a, a fougere type smell with uh, Oud in it. Okay, so there's oud in the base, and of course ambergris, that's why it's on the list. There's also this plummy accord, this fruity, fresh plummy accord, if you will. So it almost smells like you're gonna, like you're smelling, it almost smells like you're smelling like a classic cologne style um, fougere because of the grapefruit and bergamot, lemon and stuff like that. Um, and cedarwood, sandalwood, and stuff like that. Um, but then you get that Roja cystus labdanum that he loves putting in everything. So it does have a little bit of heft to it. I would never buy a bottle of this, though. This is definitely not full bottle worthy to me. And then we're going to go to uh, O, oh, the exclusive parfum now i talked about this one before and i actually did an early impression video on oh the exclusive parfum uh it is also discontinued so we're three in a row for roja discontinuations uh this people say smells very similar to the moon it has some similarities but it's also a little bit different and uh there's a huge saffron note in here with that elemi resin cypriol there's a little bit of uh birch tar and um labdanum but i think it's the way that he used the vanilla and stuff like that that kind of sets it apart with that floral heart that he loves so much may rose jasmine from grass violet stuff like that and there's a raspberry note in here uh oh the exclusive parfum since i have a bottle of the moon i would not hunt this down although if you put both of them side by side and i didn't know when this came out i'd probably say oh roja copied the moon again no actually this came out first this came out in 2016, then the moon came out in 2018 or 19 or whatever it was. So, I mean, at least you got to give them credit for putting out something first, but they did discontinue it. Oh, the exclusive Parfum. Okay, next we are going to go to uh, the original, if I can find it, here we go. The original Aoud. Uh, how am I going to show this to you? 
So dark. Look at the color of that juice. The original Aoud Parfum. So, um, I don't know if I've talked about this fragrance. I have a 10 ml decant, 5 ml decant, I can't remember, but I have some of this juice that I've been wearing for years now. Came out in 2011, it's 11 years old, and um, it has an oud accord, but like majestic oud, if you want real oud, out and out oud in your face, you're not going to go for this. Uh, this is tons of rose, May Rose Overdose, okay? with what feels like lots of synthetics. This one kind of gives me a headache sometimes. Uh, vanilla, patchouli, rhubarb, saffron, nutmeg. There's some leathery notes. There's oud, and of course there is uh, ambergris in the base. And then, oh no, and then uh, we're going to go to the flanker to the regular oud, which came out in... Uh, uh, 2012, so this is a decade old, this is Amber Aoud. Now, Amber Aoud is, um, Amber Aoud is the one that I also did an early, I did an early impression on this one, and, uh, you can go check that video out. I like this one. If I, if you made me buy one, okay, it would probably be Amber Aoud because it had this very interesting fig note uh, and I felt like it was a little bit more wearable. It didn't give me as much of a headache as the regular Aoud. And of course, it had that similar DNA, the birch, the oud, the ambergris. Um, so that's Amber Aoud. And then his new, one of his new releases is called Burlington 1819. So I'll do an early impression video on this very soon. You can see I've got some juice left to talk about it. Uh, Burlington 1819 is a freshie. And it is a citrusy, fresh fragrance with uh, lime, grapefruit, mandarin orange, bitter orange, um, benzoin, oak moss, vanilla, labdanum, ambergris, musk, rum, tobacco, and cedar wood. And uh, for a freshie, it's actually not bad. I'll talk about it on my channel one day soon. Early impression coming soon. And then we're going to go to um, probably the Roja fragrance that if you said, hey, Ramsey, you can buy or I will give you one Roja fragrance for free. Which which bottle don't you have that you want? And it would probably be Parfums de la Nuit number three. I think this is his homage to Eau de Hermes. This is his love letter to Eau de Hermes, but he's Roja'd it up. There's that smoky cystus labdanum that he does so well. And he does, you know, whoever his perfumer is does it well. That cystus labdanum in the base, um, but that animalic, you know, Eau de Hermes has this, um, it has almost this, like, um, spicy water feel to it. You know, Eau de Hermes is supposed to smell like the inside of a Birkin bag, right, of a, of a Hermes Birkin bag. And this has some of Eau de Hermes's DNA in it because of that cumin, but of course there's ambergris in the base and you know, they claim it's real ambergris. It's $1,400 a bottle, so that's why I don't have a bottle. Um, okay, so let's go to the bottles that I do have, shall we? First, we are going to do Fetiche Pour Homme. And Fetiche is um, a take on Pure Distance M or Bellamy, whatever you want to call it. Leathery, spicy. There's also a fig note here. This is one of my favorite rouges. I love this stuff. People say they don't... I love... Uh, Fetish Pour Homme. It has this smokiness that Bellamy uh, doesn't have. I prefer Bellamy, but it has this smoky refinement to it. Um, lasts forever on my skin. Uh, you know, there are some incense touches to it, and of course there's ambergris in the, in the base, but if you love the leather, check that out. And with the news of... Um, with the news of Pure Distance M being discontinued, that's one to put on your radar, especially if you like that DNA. Be careful, that doesn't get chopped, and then you're left hunting vintage bottles of Pure Distance M for triple the cost. Okay, next. Next, we are going to do uh, the lovely Great Britain. 
So Great Britain is one of my favorite Rosias. Uh, obviously, it took a lot of money to get this in my collection. But uh, Great Britain is leathery, it's woody, it reminds me, there's a little bit of a mixture of uh, Queer de Russie here with um, Canizze 10. And if you've ever smelled Queer Canage by Dior, there's a little bit of that here as well. Uh, Great Britain is just, you know, it's one of my favorite leathers. I mean, quite frankly, it didn't make my top 100 because I didn't have the bottle when I did my top 100, but there you go. Um, and then we will do the original Roja. Roja by Roja Dove. Hot Lux. Uh, Roja by Roja Dove. And by the way, there's a huge amount of ambergris in the base of um, Great Britain. Someone wrote me and said that someone said Great Britain is an ambergris fragrance. I said, nah, it's a leather, but there is a lot of ambergris. And then if you go to Roja with the little, ooh, ah, gold flakes, um, floral, spicy. I'm growing to love this fragrance. This fragrance is really growing on me. Um, lots of cinnamon, lots of elang, florals, jasmine. Um, but it's that whirlwind of like labdanum, resins, benzoin, vanilla, iris, styrax, civet in the base that I really love. And of course, there's a ton of ambergris in here. Or what smells like ambergris? It's a very passing resemblance if it isn't real. But for th three grand a bottle, it better be real. Okay, next. We are going to go to probably my favorite Roja. Uh, probably the one that I would, if you said I could only keep one, I'd keep this one. Well, but because of the juice level, maybe, I, maybe I'd keep one of the other ones. But this is Diagalev. Uh, Diagalev is probably my favorite composition, though. Spicy chifra, Baroque chifra is how Roja describes it, and, and that is a good descriptor. Um, it starts off spicy, cumin, animalic, in your face, you know, like a slap in the face, old school, vintage. If you've ever smelled Bandy by Robert P. Gay, you know, that leather note that's so strong it almost puts you off. There's a little bit of that in Diagolev, where the opening is just so powerful with the ambrette, the cumin, that it just almost shocks you, and I love that. Um, one of my favorite perfumers said that all good perfumes should shock you at first. Like, you should almost be offended. And this does that, but it dries down beautifully. Of course, there's ambergris, ambrette, leather in the base, iris, civet, all the beautiful stuff Roja uses. Um, that is Diagolev. Okay, next, we're going to do Danger. So, Danger is his take on uh, Heritage, okay? So, Danger is his take on Heritage, and he's rosied it up. He added Ambergris, which there was no Ambergris in Heritage. He added Cumin, which there was no Cumin. Uh, and, you know, he just made it a little more dirty. Uh, and I like that about this fragrance. So, but... You know, Heritage is in my top 10. If you like that DNA, you'll like Danger. And finally, we are going to do Oligarch. And this is the Eau de Parfum. This is the only Eau de Parfum you can tell by the cap. Uh, this is the only Eau de Parfum in my collection. This is now discontinued because they wanted to sell the Parfum, which came out this year for double the price. Who would have thought? Uh, but this is, you know, if you like fragrances like Terre de Hermes, uh, there is a little bit of that in here, but this is more complex. Lots of fruit notes. It's a fruity chifra fragrance. There's a lot going on here. Uh, and of course, there is an ambergris note in the base. Very office appropriate, though. Very, uh, pleasant. Really draws people to you. Okay, next, we are going to go to the House of Parfum d'Empire. This is Ombre Russe. Ombre Russe has a beautiful ambergris note. Very catchy, and it's in the mid, and it comes very soon, too. So you get this champagne vodka, and then you get this cumin ambergris that just kind of rises up 15 minutes in. It's just beautiful. And it lasts, too. That ambergris accord really lasts, but it dries down to this leathery frankincense with touches of tea. Very relaxing, but unique fragrance. I love this house. This house has really grown on me, and value for money is through the roof. I mean, this fragrance is, 
I mean, if this was a Roja, he'd charge five times this. Um, so, and people would pay it because it feels like it's worth that kind of money. And of course, um, my only bottle of Bois 1920 I'm going to include in the list. This is called Real Patchouli. Now, be careful with this one. There's something important I need to tell you because the Eau de Toilette is the bottle that I have and it's the one that I love. Rich Mitch did a video about five fragrances he loves, five fragrances he hates. He puts the Eau de Par the Parfum in the ones he hates. Uh, the reform with the Eau de Parfum apparently is not good, and they did not treat him well. Uh, they put Eau de Parfum bottles in Eau de Toilette boxes, probably because they didn't want to take the time to print new boxes. Messed up. Um, anyways, long story short, is um, if you can find these vintage Eau de Toilettes, get it. This is one of the best patchoulis you can buy. Divana, patchouli, celery, thyme. Texas cedar, eucalyptus, frankincense, benzoin, labdanum, tobacco, vanilla, and of course, ambergris in the base. Beautiful niche fragrance. Beautiful vanilla. Highly underrated. Um, you know, beautiful patchouli. Um, it's, a, it's a patchouli fragrance. All right, let me show you a couple samples. If you haven't watched my video with Liz Moores from Papillon, I would highly urge you to do it. It was an amazing interview. Liz Morris from Papillon is just amazing in and of herself. I sent her some samples of some of the vintage masculine she hasn't smelled, or she hasn't smelled in years. Um, would, I can't wait to hear her thoughts on it, but uh, the first one we're going to talk about is Tobacco Rose. Now, I was very smitten with this fragrance because I did an early impression video on my channel. Go watch that. One of the most realistic rose fragrances I've ever smelled while also being somehow so artistic. You know, it smells like the actual Bulgarian rose Otto that um, Russian Adam sent to me. Uh, it has that natural vibe to it, but the hay, there's this hay note uh, that mixes with the honey beeswax, that mixes with the ambergris. It's one of the most beautiful rose fragrances I've ever smelled. Uh, tobacco rose. Okay, next is going to be Spell 125. Okay, now, remember I told you put an asterisk next to Ombre Supreme, uh, put an asterisk next to Atlantic Ambergris, put an asterisk next to Spell 125. If you just want to smell Ambergris, there's tons of Ambergris in here, and it's the expensive stuff. Um, white Ambergris, Omani Green Frankincense, uh, Stone... Siberian Stone Pine. If you like fragrances like uh, Filin Aguil by Serge Luton's, check out Spell 125. I think you'll enjoy it. I probably wouldn't buy a full bottle because I have a bottle of Filin Aguil, um, but Tobacco Rose is on my full bottle list. Okay, next we're going to go to the House of Bagwe. Uh, there's the House of Bagwe's symbol right there. Uh, and here's the fragrance. It's called Mem. It's an animalic floral. This fragrance challenges me. There's tons of jasmine, grandiflorum, lily of the valley, geranium, damask rose, ylang ylang. I mean, there's so many florals. And they're mixed with this peppermint note um, that smells almost mentholated. You know, if you ever get that mentholated vibe... Uh, there's aldehydes in here, so it's like an aldehydic floral, but then there's labdanum, castorium, amber, civet, ambergris, white champaca. There's all kind of stuff going on, uh, and I haven't really figured it out yet. It challenges me. This is one that, actually, this house I struggle with. The other one is my, with tons of lavender. I struggle with both of the, both of those. Um, next, we're going to go to the house of uh, Etat Lieb de Orange, and this is Tom of Finland. Now, Tom of Finland, uh, this is the old style bottles. Leathery, spicy, there's this aldehydic lemon, almost like a lemon meringue pie vibe, but with birch leaf, pine, pepper, vanilla, ambergris, and suede. And it's a beautiful suede fragrance. If you're a lover of suede, this is one of the best. There's also a note of saffrolene in here. And if you... Saffrolene is like one of the captive molecules from the big houses that try to impersonate saffron. And they use it perfectly here. Uh, it's just a beautiful composition. I don't know about the new formulation, but my bottle is spot on. Okay, next we're going to go to the house of uh, Montana. And this is Parfum Dome. 
Now, this is a vintage. So this is a vintage that came from a Nuge, although I bought it from uh, Styx, the guy that I did my last unboxing from. Yeah, this is really good. Really good. Fantastic masculine. Uh, lots going on. There is this pine oak mossy accord, tarragon lavender accord, citrus and cinnamon and pepper. There's this leather accord. Uh, it almost smells like there would be tobacco in here, but there's no tobacco. If you like fragrances like Havana by Aramis, check out Montana Parfum Dome. Uh, and of course, there's an ambergris note, and I wonder if the ambergris is real in the old bottles, but um, I don't know. I have no clue. All right, so remember when I told you that you don't have to break the bank to get a good fragrance that uses ambergris as an accord? This is a cheapie that I recommended to people. Um, I did a couple cheapy videos, I think, and I included this and people came back and said, Hey, you're spot on. I bought a bottle. I'm going to buy three or four more bottles. It's that good. It's called graphite by the house of Montana. So same house, but this is uh, a decade old, 11 years old, 2011. Nathalie Lorson is the perfumer, um, underrated cedar, violet leaf and ambergris. And there's this woodiness there's this black pepper and woody dna that nathalie lorson uses in her perfumes remember in opus um nine with amouage from an hour ago uh, i mentioned that nathalie lorson uses this peppery musk cedar thing uh and you get the pepper in the in the amouage you don't get the cedar woods as much in that one because that's a floral you get the woods and pepper here it's such a great cheapie so underrated, um, and there's an ambergris note in the mid. It's it's just stunning stuff. I mean, um, for thirty bucks, I, for a hundred mil, I mean, you really can't ask for much more. You know, for thirty dollars, I mean, this is this is like what cheapies are made of. This is what you look for. Okay, let's go from one cheapie to the next. Now, this one is discontinued. That's the downside. But this is called Visit by the House of Azaro. Visit for men. Um, Anique Minardo and Fermanish made this one. It's cardamom, nutmeg, pink pepper, ambergris, musk, frankincense with blue Lebanon cedar. Blue Lebanon cedar. That's very specific. And uh, Gayak wood. Um, if you like fragrances like Gucci Rush, this is one to check out. Beautiful sandalwood smell too, even though there's no sandalwood listed. Another cheapie. Three cheapies in a row. Boucheron Porom. Now, Boucheron Porhomme uh, is marketed by Inter Parfums. I told you I think they do fantastic work. Um, this is classic masculine. It came out in 89. Um, very citrusy, lavender, professional, you know, buttoned up kind of smell. Carnation, orris, jasmine, ambergris, benzoin, oak moss, sandalwood, frankincense, tonka, vetiver, uh, musk. Beautiful fragrance. All right, let's go to the house of Guerlain. Uh, let's start with the greatest chiffre of all time, Mitsuko. Now, you can get Mitsuko in any concentration. Eau de Parfum, uh, Eau de Toilette. I even have the Eau de Cologne. It's beautiful. Mitsuko, you can't go wrong with Mitsuko. Uh, the bergamot, rose, lilac, peach, ylang, ambergris, oak moss, the spices, the vetiver, the story... The place in history, I mean, it's a perfect chiffre. I mean, it's 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 um, reference chiffre. When you look up chiffre, that's what you that's what you list Mitsuko. And the ambergris note in this old bottle, to my nose, is much more turned up than the new stuff. But I don't think you can go wrong in any formulation. And I'm gonna say the same thing about uh, Jiki. Jiki came out in 1889. I'll say the same thing. Um, the ambergris, uh, the civet is turned up to my nose in this old bottle, but I don't think you can go wrong. Even a modern eau de parfum is absolutely beautiful. Uh, and this is a fougere out and out. Rosemary, lavender, patchouli, basil. It's just beautiful. Okay, get your markers out. It's time to mark one. Uh, Mark this one down if you are wanting a real ambergris vibe. And there is real ambergris in this. Thierry Wasser um, admitted they use real ambergris in this. Um, so, so far I mentioned the likes of, you know, Ombre Supreme, 
Atlantic Ambergris. Uh, and, you know, we talked about a couple others I told you to mark down. This is one to mark. Ensemble Mythique by the House of Guerlain. This is a beautiful... I often describe this as introspective, and that's what ambergris should do. It should make you look inwards. You know, think about your place in the universe. It, this does this here. It's rose, aldehydes, ambergris, frankincense, saffron, vetiver, patchouli, underwood. It's just beautiful. Um, I mean, one of the best ambergris fragrances uh, that you can get your nose on, and... I'll actually ask you to keep that marker out because they followed it up with a fragrance in 2016 called Ombre Eternal. Now, Ombre Eternal is from the same line, but it is discontinued and it's very hard to find. Ombre Eternal has ambergris in the top. And when you spray, you get this beautiful ambergris spicy accord that hits you with uh, Orange Blossom Absolute. But for me, it's all about the leather and the amber and the dry down. So it's called Ombre Eternal, but the ambergris in the top makes this fragrance. It's so beautiful. Oh, I would love, this is one I would love a full bottle of, but I refuse to pay four or 500 bucks a bottle. I just won't do it. If I could get a full bottle of that or even a partial for 100 or 200 bucks, I'm all over it. Um, let's do a decant. So this is uh, Dubai Oud from the House of Spirit of Dubai by Nabil. And uh, Dubai Oud is, is also one I would love a full bottle of. If I could find one for 300 bucks, I'm all over it, but you know, even a partial. Um, I won't spend five, six, seven, eight. It's, it's an $1,100 fragrance for a full bottle at retail. Uh, but Oud, you know, there's a million notes in here that I don't get. There's pear, holy basil, Lime, pine, saffron, rose, cypriol, osmanthus, frankincense, orchid, lily valley, myrrh, frankincense, rose, amber woods, violet, guyac wood, sandalwood, cedarwood, musk, vanilla, oak moss, benzoin, woody notes. I mean, you name it. They have everything here. Vetiver, patchouli, Indian oud, ambergris, sandalwood, cedarwood, tobacco, balsamic notes. I, it's ridiculous. Bitter almond. It just goes on and on and on. I don't get any. I don't get hardly any of that. All I get is an oud. A uh, uh, barnyard oud with slight fresh touches, maybe some pear, pineapple, whatever you want to call it, lime. Um, and um, in the dry down, there is ambergris, but it's a barnyard oud. And I think this is one of the best from the line, actually. I would buy a full bottle of this if it wasn't so expensive. It smells like there's real oud in here. It smells like the Indian oud they're using is, is a real oud that is not, you know, burnt rubber smell. It doesn't smell like uh, some of the, you know, like they rushed the distillation. It's beautiful. Okay, next we're going to go to the house of Thierry Mugler. Yes, Thierry Mugler. This is Amen Pure Havan. Now, believe it or not, Pure Havan uh, has an ambergris note in it. Now, and this is what I was saying, it doesn't have to be real, because I promise you, Terry Mugler is not using real ambergris. This is this honeyed tobacco, um, little touch of cherry, cacao, patchouli, ambergris, labdanum, and styrax. And there you go, Pure Havana is born. I, I mean, would I love a bottle of Naxos by Zerjan? Sure, but I have this. I don't really need it. And as long as you've got the one that says Terry Mugler on it, instead of just Mugler, you're set. All right, next, we're going to go to the house of Ralph Lauren. This is Chaps. Now, Chaps is, um, well, Chaps is a Schieffer fragrance that came out uh, in 79 in response to Polo Green, because Polo Green was expensive. If you had money, that's what you wore. This was the Everyman's fragrance, Chaps. And this is beautiful. Um, there's some powderiness to the Schieffer somehow. The spices or something gives it a powder vibe. I don't know what it is either. It's, it's, um, there's no orris in here, not that I know of. Uh, but there is this sage note, very masculine, lemony, bergamot, lime in the open, lavender, jasmine, oak moss, leather, patchouli, sandalwood, vanilla, vetiver, and ambergris. Punches way above its weight class. This used to be $5 or $10 for the big bottle in 1980. Selling for three, four, five hundred bucks on eBay now, and I can see why. This kind of perfumery is dead. 
It's just dead, especially the Warner bottle. This is a Warner bottle or Cosmere bottle. Pfft, forget about it. Uh, you'd, you'd be paying Roja prices for that kind of perfumery nowadays. We're going to go to another niche house, the house of zoologists. This is Moth. Now, Moth is smells like a Guerlain to me. It has that intricacy, that depth. It smells like there's that Guerlainade in the base. There's cumin in the top. There's saffron, pepper, nutmeg, mimosa, heliotrope, iris. It is floral. It has a big floral heart. Uh, but the dry down is smoke, nagamatha, honey, ambergris, vetiver, resins, musk. It's a very, um, it's a it's a very artistic fragrance. Okay, extremely artistic, uh, because it's like imagine a moth flying from one tree to the other side of the forest trying to find a mate. Could it get burned up by the fire? You know, um, there's that insane smoke accord, like the moth flew cl too close to the flame and. Pfft, uh, but it's just, I mean, as far as creativity go, this is zoologist in a nutshell to me. Uh, I would love to own a bottle of Camel and Hyrax, but, you know, they're on my on my wish list. Maybe one day. All right, next, uh, from the house of Crizia, one of my favorite uh, discontinued houses, basically, because everything I own from them is discontinued. This is Moods Womo. Patchouli heaven. If you're a patchouli lover, you'll be in heaven with Moods Womo. Uh, but it also has other masculine notes. It was in the oak moss video yesterday, and it has ambergris and leather and traditional masculine lavender in the top, stuff like that. All right, so let's go to a feminine fragrance. This is uh, Dior's Dune from 91. Uh, woody, spicy. Uh, it feels like there is a, you know, the peony and the Brazilian rosewood almost gives it like this lotion-like vibe. But the floral heart is so beautiful. It feels like there's frankincense in here, but there's not. And of course, there's ambergris listed in the base. Stunning composition. Uh, two master perfumers, Dominique Ropion and Jean-Louis Suizac, by the way. And then a discontinued cheapy that smells very high quality to me. Uh, even though it was a cheapy, I love this fragrance. This was sent to me by Heinke. Thank you very much, Heinke. Uh, even though I haven't seen you in the comments lately, I hope you're doing well. Uh, Explosive is what she sent me. And uh, Etienne Eigner is the brand. Uh, my God. Spicy, floral. It, it feels like there's some civet castorium in the, in the base. If you like fragrances like Tenere by Paco Rabanne that have that dirty animalic floral... Check this out. This is stunning stuff. And I don't think it's super expensive yet. I have the Eau de Toilette. There's also an Eau de Parfum I've never smelled. But there's ambergris in the base, moss in the base, patchouli. It's And it even smells like the ambergris is real. Everything about this fragrance is convincing. And that's hard to do for a $30 frag. So bravo to the House of Eigner on that one. Okay, next is Marbert Mann, one of my favorite uh, Raymond Shailan creations of all time. This is lavender, aldehydes, basil, mugwort, rose, honey, geranium, juniper, carnation, cinnamon, patchouli, moss, cedarwood, sandalwood, ambergris, and leather and musk. But for me, it's all about that fresh honey, best fresh honey fragrance ever of all time for me. Uh, dirty honey fragrance, Hugo Boss number one. That would be my choice. But fresh honey, Marbert Man. Uh, it's amazing. And then, how about a fresh amber? This is Costume National Soul. And this is a Dominique Ropion. Cardamom, pink pepper, bergamot, geranium, leather, oud, ambergris, vanilla, and patchouli. So, the ambergris in the dry down um, makes it very bright, very uplifting. I would say this is an uplifting amber fragrance, you know. Most amber fragrances are kind of down. They're, you know, they weigh on you. They're heavy. This is a very bright amber, which makes it unique. Um, but if you hate um, amber woods, you do get this amber wood vibe in the dry down. Because of the oud accord, uh, you might struggle with this one if you don't like synthetic fragrances. But... Um, if you want to try a bright amber, check out Soul. Great fragrance. Okay. 
Next, we're going to go to the house of Francesca Bianchi. I'm not a big fan of her work, to be honest with you. Although I don't hate it, it's just, this is Etruscan water. I need to wear this more. Um, it's not bad, it's just I expected, Persolet said in 2019 when this came out, that this is comparable to um, Az Azare by Estee Lauder. And I went, what? And I ran out and bought this and went, oh, shit. This ain't, this ain't got nothing on Azare. So maybe in its own right, it's a good fragrance. It's got Immortel, Bergamot, Basil, Caraway, Labdanum, Orris Root, that Orris that Francesca Bianchi loves to use, Ambergris, Oak Moss, Vetiver Musk, Grapefruit, Petit Gran. It's not bad. It's just not Azare. I'd take Azare all day. Then we're going to go to the box. We'll be done in 15 minutes. Worry not, children. The first one is one of the greatest fragrances of all time. This is Arpege by the House of Lambon. And this is the X-Ray. Here's the bottle. Stunning X-Ray bottle. And stunning price I got this for. Um, I've worn it to bed a couple times. And it is one of the greatest uh, floral fragrances ever made. It was Andre Frace and Paul Va Vacher that, Vasha that created this. Um, it is, uh, I mean... Floral, powdery, elang, neroli, jasmine, lily of the valley, rose. There is a camellia note here, even though I said camellia has no smell. Um, ambergris, benzoin, musk, patchouli, sandalwood, vanilla, and vetiver. And the extra came out in 1927. One of the, I mean, uh, Hall of Fame perfume fragrances, if there ever was one. Uh, and how about that logo? Just the mother giving the daughter the gift of l'envant. I mean... Just amazing stuff. So, um, anyways, that is, uh, there's an ambergris note in the dry down there. Then we're going to go to the house of Ducita. And Ducita, which, by the way, comes in a calfskin box. Ooh, calfskin box, me lord. Ooh, calfskin box. Um, this is Isara. And Isara is a, um, Isara is a spicy autumn fragrance. And I say autumn because there's this hay-like note that comes to mind when you smell this. Even though there's no hay listed, there's this pine, vetiver, clary sage, uh, oak moss, ambergris, musk, but it blends to create the feeling of autumn, okay? So if you've ever if you've ever been on like a hay ride, right? And you're going to, I don't know, a haunted house in October, that's the vibe that this fragrance gives me. Like it, don't love it. Oud and Finney is her best fragrance. Okay, next, we're gonna go to the house of Serge Loutons. This is a vintage Palais Royale bottle of Musk's Kublai Khan. This fragrance is challenging for me. Um, it's animalic. It's spicy. There's costus root, which gives off this wet animal-like vibe, like a wet animal sleeping on the floor. You know, the musk in these vintage um, bottles are nuclear. And to make matters worse, I had a girlfriend that used to wear this in the early 2000s. And I have these weird scent memory attached to this. That's why I bought you know, a very small partial just to experience it and, you know, talk about it on the channel. Beeswax, Castorium, Ambret, Ambergris, Labdanum, Musk, Patchouli, Rose, Vanilla, Civet. Um, I will give this a wear and talk about it one day once I get my, um, once I get my courage up. This takes a, this really demands a lot of me. And then... We're going to go to uh, the original Amouage from 1983. This is Gold Woman. Amouage Gold Woman. So this is a little tester bottle. Um, you can see it, the old bottles used to say Sultanate of Oman. He was the guy who owned the brand. Floral, Oriental, Guy Robert creation again. Um, rose, lily of the valley, frankincense, orris, jasmine, myrrh, ambergris, musk, cedarwood, sandalwood, and civet. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, 
excuse me, whilst I hydrate, even though we're coming to the end. Thirsty work. Okay. Next, we're going to go to the Amouage that celebrated 25 years, Jubilation 25. I mean, look at the dent in this. No, this is not a vintage non-magnetic cap, but I don't care. I love this stuff. I mean, it's vintage in the fact that it's not the new one that says the name down here or on the side. You know, the name is only on the collar on this one, but Jubilation 25 is Bertrand du Chaffaut's masterpiece. This and uh, Schieffer Palatine are just stunning. Uh, this has this Divana frankincense, honey, Gaillac wood, cinnamon, immortel, ambergris, Oud, Papanax, Myrrh, Atlas Cedar, Patchouli, Musk, Moss. I mean, could easily be a signature scent for me. Easily. Hands down. Uh, no problems. And then, we're going to go to the only bottle of Zerzhoff I own. And just to tell you how little shits I give about bottles, I bought this one because it was cheaper. This is the refill of Zerzhoff Ohm. I only care about the juice inside. And the juice inside is basically a... Oh, it's so smoky and leathery and spicy. It's a take on this, okay? And I actually prefer the Zerzhoff Ohm over Canadse 10. Now, this is a modern bottle, so I've never smelled the old stuff. If um, I would love to smell the old stuff one day. But uh, Zerzhoff Ohm is just, I mean, it's the best Zerzhoff, hands down, in my opinion. It's dark, it's uh, leathery, there's this tarragon, coriander spice thing going on. There's also iris and clove and um, birch. There's that smoky birch note that I love so much. And, I mean, as far as just in your face, out and out, no holds barred, leather, this is fantastic. Uh, I'm glad I tried it and found out I loved it, and uh, I'm glad I found this bottle. I mean, I wish I had a big, I wish I had a big bottle with the fancy cap and the amazing leather thing that folds over in the box, but I don't care. Whatever. Next, we're gonna go to the house of Suga. Uh, James Barry is the perfume maker slash brand owner here, and here's his brands. Uh, logo and here's the bottle or here's the atomizer here's the discovery atomizer fiona uh look at the color of the juice of fiona fiona is one of the best animalic fragrances i've ever smelled ever hands down period close you know close the book uh this, let me just read this note listing it's been a while since i've done this so my new viewers who haven't heard this before Buckle up. Siberian deer musk, civet, brown ambergris, white ambergris, black ambergris, hyracium, hyracium absolute, castorium, onicha, goat's hair, bourbon vanilla, tonka bean, skunk accord, muskrat, Indian oud, Laotian oud, Vietnamese oud, oak moss absolute, French Vanilla Absolute, Jasmine Sambac Absolute, Jasmine Grandiflorum Absolute, Moroccan Rose Absolute, White Champaca, Champaca Absolute, White Lotus Absolute, Pink Lotus Absolute, Ylang Ylang, Ylang Ylang Absolute, and Frangipani Absolute. My fucking God. Um, and it smells exactly that way. I mean, that's, that's how it smells. It smells exactly like that. Um, totally full bottle worthy, but it is a little bit expensive. But um, I mean, just if you're an animalic lover like I am, Fiona is a must sniff. No questions asked. All right. The last two are going to be Bortnikoff's. Um, and the first one is going to be a musk fragrance. And this is Musk Habib. Musk Habib. 
Uh, and this is the old Bortnikov caps, which came with the wood, which I actually like more. Oh, Musk Habib is one of my favorite Musk fragrances of all time. Um, maybe my favorite. I mean, now that I've smelled Siberian Musk by Arige the Dore, maybe I like that one a little bit more, but, uh, this is really good. Uh, bergamot, cardamom, nutmeg, ylang, cedarwood, tolu balsam, ambergris, deer musk, real deer musk, oak moss, vetiver, tonka, and uh, vanilla. And um, yeah, tonka bean, vanilla, it's just um, absolutely, you know, the musk in here will change the way you view musk forever. It's... I mean, it's it's a holy experience. I've said it before. Russian Adam came in on one of the interviews, and he mentioned that um, somewhere it's written that the floor of heaven is uh, made out of musk. I don't know. Um, but I totally see that as like a holy smell. Okay, next we're going to go to the final one, and it's Amber Cologne. Now, Amber Cologne also has the old school cap. I think the new ones look like Roja Dove caps or something. But um, this is one of the best ambergris fragrances money can buy. Uh, Amber Cologne uses this mixture of citruses, spices, and florals, which Bortnikoff uses frangipani in a way I've never smelled before. He uses this frangipani... Um, Jasmine Sombak, and now that I've had a chance to really smell Jasmine Sombak in its, in its original form, thanks to Russian Adam, I can really pick it out here. Um, the Jasmine Sombak just stands out in this composition. With brown ambergris and ambergris, so you get two types of ambergris, Sri Lankan oud, Indonesian oud, and vanilla, but don't let the oud scare you. This is completely wearable in... This is a work, this, I would wear this to work, not bad an eye. Uh, I'd wear this, uh, I've worn this on special occasions, Father's Day, birthdays. I mean, it just, it's so posh. You know, you go somewhere and heads turn. They're like, what in the world are you wearing? Because that ambergris is so just, I mean, it, it, it's almost like you just want to drink it. You know, it's just, it's it, it just draws people to you. They're just, the inquisitiveness of people when you wear this, they're just like, what? What is that that you're wearing? Like, they want to know. Um, Amber Cologne is um, a stunner, and that's the end of the Ambergris video. So to all my loyal followers who have now sat through two hour and a half videos back to back, I very much do appreciate it. I hope you've learned something. I hope you... Oh, if you've got your little marker out, put Amber Cologne on the Mark Ambergris list, the, the high Ambergris concentration list. Thank you everyone for watching. Likes, subscriptions, comments, all that good stuff that helps the algorithm is very much appreciated. Um, I love seeing your faces in the comments. Leave me a comment. Tell me what your favorite ambergris uh, fragrances are. And um, I hope to see you tomorrow with another video. Cheers, guys. Bye now.